One, two, three, four, five. It's a five-minute Bill Showtime song. It's a cute little tune that's five minutes long. If you sing it real loud, you can't sing it wrong. It's a five-minute Bill Showtime song. If we started all the action at the top of the show, there'd be buffering, loading, and spinning. So we play a little countdown to let you know that the real fun will soon be beginning. It's the five-minute Bill Showtime song. It's it's a five minutes long. If you sing it real loud, you can't sing it wrong. It's a five minutes till showtime song. A countdown gives you time to prepare and builds up some anticipation. So get your snacks, and grab a drink, and settle in your chair. It's nearly time to share our fun creation. It's a four minute till showtime song. It's a cute little tune that's four minutes long. If you sing it real loud, you can't sing it wrong. It's a four minutes till showtime song. We started all the action at the top of the show. There be buffering, loading, spinning. So we play a little countdown to let you know that the real fun will soon be beginning. It's a four minutes till showtime song. It's a cute little tune that's four minutes long. If you sing it real loud, you can't sing it wrong. It's a four minutes till showtime song. A countdown gives you time to prepare and build up some anticipation. So get your snacks, we'll grab a drink, snack. settle in your chair. Right. It's nearly time to share a fun creation. It's a three-minute till showtime song. It's a cute little tune that's three minutes long. If you sing it real loud, you can't sing it wrong. It's a three-minute till showtime song. If we started all the action at the top of the show, there we buffering, loading, and spinning. So we play a little countdown to let you know that the real fun will soon be beginning. It's a three-minute till showtime song. It's a cute little tune that's three minutes long. If you sing it real loud, you can't sing it wrong. It's a three-minute till showtime song. The countdown gives you time to prepare and build up some anticipation. So get your snacks, grab a drink, settle in your chair. It's nearly time to share a fun creation. It's a two-minute till showtime song. It's a cute little tune that's two minutes long. If you sing it real loud, you can't sing it wrong. It's a two-minute till showtime song. If we started all the action at the top of the show, there'd be buffering, loading, and spinning. So we play a little countdown to let you know that the real fun will soon be beginning. Showtime song, it's a cute little tune that's two minutes long. If you sing it real loud, you can't sing it wrong. It's a two minutes of showtime song. A countdown gives you time to prepare and build up some anticipation. So get your snacks and grab a snack, snack. settle in your shower. Yeah, it's nearly time to share a fun creation. It's a one minute till showtime song. It's a cute little tune that's one minute long. If you sing it real loud, you can't sing it wrong. It's a one minute till showtime song. If we started all the action at the top of the show, there'd be buffering, loading, and spinning. So we play a little countdown to let you know that the real fun will soon be beginning. It's the one minute till showtime song. It's a cute little tune that's one minute long. If you sing it real loud, you can't sing it wrong. It's the one minute till showtime song. A countdown gives you time to prepare and build up some anticipation. So get your snacks and grab a drink, and settle in your chair. It's nearly time to share a fun creation. That was a five minutes till showtime song. And now it's time to start the show. That's it. Time to start the show. Yeah, the song's done. Why are you looking at us like that? Oh, that was only four minutes and 30 seconds. Yikes. Oh, no. Uh, I guess we could ask people to sing the chorus with us again. Yeah, bam, stretch it out. That was the five minute till showtime song. A cute little tune that's five minutes long. If you sing it real loud, you can't sing it wrong. It's the five minutes till showtime song. Ba da 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 da
Welcome to Talking Funny. It's the Funny Silly Talk Show that has sound effects. My name is international hilarious comedian Sasha here, as always, with my delightful sidekick, the noob. He gops the noob. Only, of course, uh, the noob, he cannot talk because when he was a little kid, he watched his father kill his mother. Uh, but you guys, <laughs> you guys, tonight, tonight we have four people who are going to try to crack the vault for the final time to rescue the noob's mom and win $50,000 cash. And if nobody, if nobody gets it right, we're going to open this envelope and see what the heck the number was. And then we're going to open that safe and see what's going on. So one way or another, we are opening that safe tonight. And boy, we have a great guest. This is going to be a phenomenal show. Uh, Goody says, I'm probably just going to chat. Oh, hi, Mark. I'll show. Oh, boy, it's the greatest Tuesday ever again. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. The show was buffering and loading and spinning. Okay. I was promised no buffering. Whoopie silly fun time with sound effects. A in the slide whistle. And uh, Ramona, already I get the results of the test back. I definitely have breast cancer. True for me. And also my favorite part of the room. That's, that's wonderful. Uh, Parker and Ed says, Hello. Matt LeBlanc says, what's up, guys? Uh, hi, Nob. Hooray. We get all sorts of hellos today. Uh, hi, Sasha and the noob. Hello, Barbara. It's good to see you. I'm glad you're here, Barbara. Anywho, uh, I don't want to waste any time because our guest is one of the busiest gentlemen in Hollywood and also uh, absolutely one of the kindest. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I am excited to have on the show, I know you are as well, uh, Mr. Greg Sestero. Hello, Greg. How are you, buddy? Oh, hey, guys. How are you? We're good. It's great to be here. Oh, it's amazing to have you here. Uh, am I the first person to not say, oh, hi, Greg, or some variant of such in welcoming you onto a show? No, but I, you know what? I'm, I'm very taken uh, with your backdrop. It looks like a very familiar rooftop I used to hang out on years so, ago. You'll be surprised to hear this, but it's actually CGI. It's digitally uh, rendered. Green screen. I like it. I it's like green it. Screen. <laughs> uh, Greg Sestero, uh, my gosh, you know, you, in, in the launch of The Room, that film that brought you to the world's attention, uh, I imagine that's not the, the step into the limelight you expected as an actor. Uh, so, it, and again, if you've told the story 10 million times, you're allowed to skip over it. But how has it that how's that evolved for you? What is life like now as Greg Sestero from the room? Well, you start out uh, being an actor. You always think, hey, you know, I got to be in Back to the Future, or Star Wars. You're always thinking something big, something grand. And sometimes we don't realize, you know, that may not be our path. Maybe the, the thing that's going to get us going is something that we have no idea what it could possibly be. So when Tommy offered me the role to star in this movie, I thought, oh, for sure. No one's going to ever see this thing. I mean, I've gone out for things that that had, you know, big actors that don't get seen. So I thought, hey, there's no way this movie ever goes anywhere. And here we are, you know, 18 years later and people still dig it. Um, you know, there's rooftops, you know, there's green screens and, um, you know, it's just a movie that people love. So I can't, yeah. you know, I, I can't really complain. Well, here's why I think you're going to continue to be incredibly successful and well loved is that, you know, there some people could really have a tough time uh, with fame from something like that. But I think, again, you are uh, absolutely genuine and kind in the way you write about it, in the way you talk about it. And I think that endears you to people. And I think only amazing things uh, are going to keep on happening to you. So cheers for that. Uh, you know, that was a thank you. uncharted ground. And I think you dealt with it very well. Uh, we have a question from one of our viewers. She says, Greg, what's your favorite trilobite? I'm dying to know. Uh, you know what? I need to I need to get more educated. What is a trilobite? They're like a, a, a science thing. We don't even know, but she asks every guest, and it's okay not to have a favorite trilobite. Uh, you know what? Mine, <laughs> mine might have to be uh, the noob. 
I think. <laughs> does he count? He counts as a trilobite. He does now, if Greg Sestero okay. says so. Uh, okay. Zimmer Brooks says, Puppet Master got robbed at the Emmys. How do you respond to that? Well, I think it got robbed at the Oscars because it did air in theaters. Um, so That's therefore, good... it made it eligible for the Oscars. And I think Andre Toulon was just a character who's just a little bit too ahead of his time. And I think, you know, me wearing the Liberace jacket, I think hurt a little bit of my chances. But, you know, Puppet Master's still going. So I, I think in the end, uh, it won. I think it may receive maybe a retroactive Oscar. When people, you know, it's just, again, ahead of its time. But in time, people will appreciate it for what it is. You know what they no, they should do that. They should do retroactive Oscars because Absolutely. so many times movies win that year and they get all the hype that year and people talk about them. And then 10 years later, people don't even remember what it was about. So um, that's what we think on for this show. We're really going after the retroactive recognition here. We want people to find this show in 30 years and say, oh, what the gem. Why didn't we watch that when we had the chance? I, hey, I, I'll sign whatever you need me to sign, man. I think um, you guys are long overdue. That's great. Uh, we have, <coughs> excuse me, uh, Ramona says she met Greg at a screening at the Music Box. Super nice. And she appreciated your stories. The Music Box Theater in Chicago. Uh, right, it's, in Chicago. Uh, one of, yeah, one of the best indie theaters. It has like seven or 800 seats. And they, I remember when we first did screenings of the room, I went there with Tommy and there was like four or five pack shows and they would like interact with the movie and throw spoons and they were there till like four o'clock in the morning. And then I thought, wow, people really enjoy this movie. Maybe I should um, tell them that the behind the scenes story of the making of this movie is even crazier than the movie itself. And it was early on there where I got the idea to, to write the book uh, at one of those screenings. Now, when you wrote the disaster artist, was there any, uh, how long after you wrote it before uh, James Franco reached out and says, I'm going to make this a movie? And what was that like? So the book had come out for three weeks. And we had people interested, like this, this agent that read it thought this could make a really interesting movie because he had never seen The Room. So we pitched it to a few people and actually Sasha Baron Cohen was interested. His people were interested in the story. And Tommy was like, no, nah, sorry, this guy, not my style. Well, no. <laughs> I was thinking, I was thinking Javier Bardem and David Fincher and Tommy's like, wow, this killer guy, you must be crazy. Um, so we couldn't, we were trying to kind of come together and then Three weeks after the book came out, James Franco and Seth Rogen reached out, and uh, that was like the perfect fit because Tommy really likes James Franco, and I uh, I thought this, you know, we we had a conference call with James, and it was just like it was perfect. Like James really got the story; he wanted to make the movie. Uh, you know, Tommy was like, you know, who play me? Uh, you know, it's not so easy part. You know, and James is like, oh, we'll we'll, we'll find people, we'll find people to play to play you, Tommy. And Tommy's like, well, who? You know, Johnny Depp is a good guy. And and then <laughs> James just laughed. And then I'm like, James, how about you? And he's like, Tommy's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good choice, you know. I see a movie, you do some good movie, some bad movie, but that's okay. And uh, and so it was, yeah, it was like, you know, three weeks after and it was just, it was really surreal. But James was like, this is the movie I want to make and I'm going to get it made. And he, uh, you know, went out and did it. So that's one. Your, as mentioned in the comments several times, your Tommy impression is maybe the best I've heard. I think you should have played Tommy in the movie. Uh, you know what? One of my, one of my one of my projects that I'm envisioning somewhere down the line. I don't know when, but there's so many stories about Tommy early on when he moves to San Francisco and he's like pre you know, the room pre meeting me and he's just this guy in San Francisco trying to find his way. I think there's a great series in there of that story. And somewhere down the line, I will play him in something, whether it's, you know, his early years, you know, cause he's young all America guy. Um, I will oh, I play him that. at some point in, in something. So yeah. someday, yeah. hopefully it's a, it's a television series called Lil Tommy L apostrophe I L Tommy. And you can play Lil Tommy. And you know, yeah, that's, that's a good idea, but you know, why put little? Why not just put Tommy? You know, why, why we don't need all these decorations? 
I now now I know. I suspected, but now I know that you have been Tommy Wiseau all along. Uh, <laughs> one of you is just an actor Maybe. playing another at all times. That's uh oh, my mind is exploding. Uh, just totally not the vampire from Louisiana, says Seymour Brooks. There's some connections to Louisiana, but um, you know, I'm still trying to figure that out exactly. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Uh, so tell, you know, okay, recently, uh, Haunting of Bly Manor, you show up there. <laughs> tell a little bit about the story. How did you so get that? Up yeah, that was, that was incredible. I, I did a, a horror convention, my first horror convention ever. And I was there. Um, and Kate Siegel, who's Mike Flanagan's wife, who was in Haunting of Hill House, approached me and she said, Mike had read the book, disaster artist, and he would love to give me a cameo. It was very last minute too, because they had already they were already like going to shoot in like two weeks. So it was very last minute. You know, I had to go up to Vancouver, and I and there was you know I was the groom of the show who appears and you know in it, and uh, so it was super last minute. It was really exciting, and I went up to Vancouver and you know got to meet Mike and work with Carla Gugino, and uh, you know it was cool to be on a on a real you know, full on amazing set, you know, with no green screens, as much as I love green screens, it was just cool to work on such a great series. And Mike is such a good director. Um, but it was, yeah, it was really fun. It was a good surprise too. Cause people had no idea. They're like, wait a minute. When you're in a really, really bad movie, you're not supposed to then be in a really good show. It shouldn't work that way. So I, I always I enjoyed, enjoyed that. I enjoyed that surprise. That's amazing. Uh, and again, again, I think a testament to how cool you are about this whole thing and people want to work with you. I tell you what, I had a guy in uh, Kenya write me the script for The Big Lebowski 2. Uh, he had never seen the first movie and his English is terrible, uh, but I wrote him a little de paragraph description about the first movie. So we have this script for The Big Lebowski 2. I think maybe you and Tommy should produce that. Just get permission from the Cohen brothers and do the Big Lebowski too, or just yeah, forget permission. Just go shoot it on your iPhone. Just you know, you know, yeah, as Tommy what, would as Tommy would say, why why wait? You know, why why stop? You need to have action. It's so boring. All right. Well, only if I can get you and Tommy to commit uh, <laughs> to All feature right. roles. Uh, everybody heard it. I think that was a commitment. We're good. Uh, we have. Uh, Reese says, The Disaster Artist is the last non-science book I've read, and that was a couple years ago. I honestly don't think I can top it, so I don't try. <laughs> that's great. You know, that, that's, that's amazing. I, I really felt like with Disaster Artist that I really wanted it to be a fun read that, you know, anybody can just pick it up. They don't need to know about the room. They don't need to really like movies and just pick it up and get lost in this crazy character story. Because everybody, I think, has a dream. Everybody's got a friendship that they question and they wonder why they're in it. And I thought it was very relatable. Uh, and so I figured, you know, whether it's the noob or so, you know, I think uh, I he think wonders it's every that, day that why did he agree to this? <laughs> <laughs> and then also, everybody's been at a point in their life where they're wondering where it's going and what what decision should I make. So. It's super cool to hear people that that love the book and and just you know wanted to get through it and resonated the story resonated with them because that's really what I was trying to do. I, I the the goal was to take you know what's called a terrible movie and turn it into a story that is relatable, heartfelt, funny, and um, and enjoyable. Because I I mean how many times I read a book and like ten pages in I'm just like okay I'm I'm zoning out. So I, you know we worked really hard to make sure it was it was engaging throughout. Uh, absolute success there. And I think, you know, with them, um, if people live incredible stories, it's sort of their obligation to tell those stories. So how lucky for us that you're a great storyteller uh, because uh, the book, the movie, all of that, that whole experience uh, was absolutely worth documenting. So again, cheers to you. Uh, Greg, will you play a game with us really quickly? Yeah, let's do it. I love games. All right. This one uh, is really fun. It's called Find. Disney, The Mandalorian. Uh, and here's how it works. We have the real live Disney's Mandalorian as is going to be on the show. Uh, and he's in one of these Walt Disney secret vaults. So if you can just tell us which vault to look in, we'll find The Mandalorian. I think The Man Mandalorian is in number six. Door number six? Nope. <laughs> this guy. 
<laughs> okay. You know what? When all else fails, check out number two. So number two. No, this fellow with. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Um, how about number three? Door number three. Don't you rather try a different door first? <laughs> sure. Let's try. Uh, let's try number four. Yeah, I thought you said four. There you go. Up oh, is this fella. That's the Mandalorian, number. right? No, it's similar. That's not, <laughs> it's not him. Okay, yeah. number one. Ooh, door number one. Not the Mandalorian. Nope. <laughs> number five. Door number five. Oh, it's just this sad flower. Well, there's only one door left, Greg Sestero. Where are we going to find the Mandalorian from Disney? The actual Mandalorian. Third, third, third time's the charm. There we go. There you go, buddy. You found the Mandalorian. Hey, you know what? You know what? I, it's it's about saving the best for last. So we did that. <laughs> We're in good shape now. Absolutely. You played a great, great game. Uh, it was Greg, like I, pl I played it the best worst you could possibly do. So That's that's your brand, buddy. There you go. <laughs> we have Elizabeth says you are definitely the nicest guest. Uh, and then when all else fails, check out number two, Greg Sestero, 2021. <laughs> a great quote. Uh, well, so, it should be number. It should be number three. But yeah, that's true. Greg, what's uh, what's next for you? Where can people find you? What can people see from you? Uh, what are the projects you want people to know about? So I took uh, this whole quarantine thing was crazy, and I and I was glad I was able to really stay creative because I finished, I wrote, directed, produced, and starred. I pulled a Wizzo and and made a horror film uh, in Arizona about a, a story about a cult. It's a really crazy, uh, bizarre, twisty movie. So an actual um, cult. This is about a real cult that exists in Arizona. It's a real cult and it's a really crazy story, but finished it and it's done. And um, so hopefully it should be coming out uh, later this year. It's t uh, it's called Miracle Valley, tentatively called that right now. But um, and also and also involves like human trafficking. It's a bizarre story. Uh, if you like The Hills Have Eyes and Midsummer, then this this movie's for you. Uh, and then I also wrote. I, I've been fascinating with UFOs and. Uh, one of my favorite movies growing up was Fire in the Sky. So I wrote a UFO abduction uh, story. Whitley that Stryber, is... yeah? What's that? Was that Whitley Stryber, the Fire in the Sky? I might be, yeah. It was about a, about a UFO abduction. But I, yeah, uh, yeah. But I wrote, uh, so I wrote a, a crazy script about a UFO abduction and also a social thriller about, stalk, about stalking. So I got two new projects that I'm going to be working on um and a horror movie coming out so i've been i've been thankful to take take this time and and be creative but uh the the new horror movie miracle valley will hopefully be coming out will be in theaters in the fall possibly and then going into next year just depending how everything is going absolutely uh well that's great i i can't wait i'm going to check out all those things i want to echo what our audience has said and uh you're super kind to chat with us to spend time with us uh to share a little time with us so greg sestero we wish you all the best and we hope hey, to. No, I, I appreciate you guys and best best of luck with the show and keep doing your thing. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's all about creating and having fun. And you guys are doing that. And the new, the noob is, you know, he's making things happen. So he is. He's the real star yeah. of the show, hands down. <laughs> Buddy Greg, we appreciate the time. Be well. Take care. All right, guys. Peace out. Thank you. Greg Sestero. Holy freaking cow. That's great. Ah, so cool. LF Cougar, what do you think of that, Buddy? Oh, I tell you. It, it was a real treat. He really is a super nice guy. I, if I didn't know who he was, and I do, um, I, I still would have thought he was the coolest guy just because of that jacket and the sunglasses. And, and the glasses. You put those As two cool things together. Well, I wanted to kiss him the whole time. I love that it took 50-something episodes for you to figure out, don't let me play with the guests. And I'm and I'm just super excited that he was here. I want to toss Last a little picture in with him, go to the music box with him. I miss it so much. Left Cougar, I gave you control so you can make yourself appear on screen at any moment in the show. I forgot that. Yeah, that's that's why we did that so you could jump on whenever you want to. I, I didn't. Yeah, want to... I forgot completely about that. Yeah, so I'm not keeping you out. I'm just giving you opportunities to jump in whenever you want. Yeah, I just forgot all about it. <laughs> well, I'm glad we worked that out six or eight weeks ago. Then, and <laughs> it's gonna be a big finale. 
Big finale, because tonight we're going to get inside that safe one way or another. I got the code right here. Noob, this is going to be crazy exciting. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be a show. It already has been. <coughs> we have Greg Sestero. We have an incredible musical guest coming up right now. Uh, you know this person from the comments. Uh, one of these people frequently asks uh, our guests if they are swingers. So that's Teresa in a, going to be in the chicken costume. And Bibi Hayes, Mr. Bill Hayes, is going to join her as well. And they're going to do some music for us. But first, let's watch 60 seconds of Kelly works at her computer. Chicken, Peter, you just a little chicken. Cheep, chip, 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 chip. What are you calling a chicken? Come on. Cheep, chip, 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 chip. You're that good, you. You're just a chicken. Chip, 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 chip. If a lot of people love each other, the world will be a better place to live. Thank you very much, 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 much. <laughs> That's right. You know what they say, love is blind. Don't hurt Johnny. Don't hurt Johnny. 
What's going on here? Why are you doing this? I did not hit her. It's not true. I did not hit her. It's not true. I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not hit her. I did not hit her. Beautiful. Uh, Thank you. Absolutely phenomenal, Mr. BB Hayes and Teresa the Chicken. Uh, <laughs> what an absolute joy to have you guys on the show. Thanks for that. That was an incredibly talented mix as well. Thank uh, you very much. I love it. Uh, we know you guys are in for an amazing evening, I'm sure. So thank you for being with us. We'll talk to you all soon. Thank you. Bye See you in the comments. Oh, Teresa and Mr. B.B. Hayes, uh, that finally, finally, the party, this show deserved. That was freaking amazing. What do you think there, Left Cougar? You know, I always say I like the musical guest, but this week, I actually mean it. That was fantastic. I was dancing. I was swinging a chicken around my head. I feel like it's my birthday. It's It could be. So here's the deal. I'm bringing on the network president, Mr. Louis Hirsch. Mr. Hirsch, uh, we have this show and then next week. And then potentially the show's over, buddy. Uh, so I know you put together a poll, right? To, I so, sure did. What's that? I sure did. Tell us a little bit about this. What should people do right now? All people have to do, we want a one-word description of this show. Just go to your URL and give us a one-word description of talking funny. And what are you going to do with that? What are you going to do with what happens from this poll? We're going to look at the at the responses of people and decide if you got a future. All right. Well, here we go. We are going to put this up. This is live now. This is absolutely live. So, so far, we have ludicrous spelled, I think, wrong. <laughs> I don't know. Nothing off for spelling. Okay. We got honors, talking, fun, uh, fuck amazing. <laughs> uh, we got... Farts is in there. Poo poo, pee pee, uh, pee pee and poo poo. Uh, <laughs> a big farts, fun. Oh, titties is in there now. I uh, see titties. Uh, oh, look, it's making a cool word cloud. Uh, puss amazing. <laughs> Ball tastic. Uh, oh, hi, Mark is in there. Smegma is in there. Uh, <laughs> I'm about yeah, what do you sing here? So as the network president, what do you think of all this, Louis? Uh, it tells me something about the intellectual capabilities of your audience, but oh. I'm not quite sure what. But, uh, we're going to have to is, take these words and analyze them a little bit, I think. And, is this what you were expecting? Oh, there's Carol, Schmoxy. I wasn't expecting as many responses, I have to admit that. I think it might be one person. It could very well be. We'll have to look at that. Yeah, we'll look at the data, obviously. But what are you looking for? What do you want to see here that would tell you that the show can continue? Whether people actually like this thing. I mean, there are all kinds of tastes. So maybe there are, maybe there's an audience to this stuff. And it's so if there is, I don't I don't want to cancel your show. Yeah, but it's hard I to tell from these good, responses. You know? Like I don't know if they like it or if they don't like it. These are pretty neutral. It's hard, topics. yeah. And the neutrality is not a good thing in, in mm. show business. You don't want neutral people. <laughs> I see neutral. Uh, <laughs> wow. Well, best show on TV does stand out to me. That's so good. Maybe, That's yeah. a good one. But it's not this, it's not any bigger uh, than the other ones. So Yeah, so as as a whole, I can't say it's it's a huge game for me, I have to admit. But We'll analyze it. We'll come back. And now it's just absolutely unreadable. Uh, or my internet is frozen. 
Yeah, well, both of those things seem to happen to you, show a lot. That's the thing. All right, well, that was, I think, a useful exercise. Uh, <laughs> what are your thoughts? Uh, what are your thoughts there? So uh, do you think, so we have one more show next week, mm -hmm. the big finale. Uh, after that, are we coming back or are we done for? Let me think about it. I'm not going to make up my mind till next week. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. And no, no, no sudden decisions on this. Thing. Okay, well, we'll bring you back next week and we'll have the big reveal if Talking Funny is going to come back. After we should be yeah, but uh, and Roger Ryan just throws in ass to ass. I think he put in the URL wrong for the uh, the poll. All right, Louis Hirsch, good to see you, <laughs> buddy. Good to see you, ladies and gentlemen. We have uh, we got a few things going on tonight. So we got uh, again the last four guesses, and we're gonna open that vault. Uh, but we're gonna save that for the very end of the show. We're gonna come back with Carol because Carol's here, ladies and gentlemen. So if you have questions for Carol, prime those. But first, uh, you're going to freaking love this week's A Complete Waste of Your Time and Money. I do. No, I do. For better, for worse, for worse, for worse. For worse. Sai, I made you something. I hope you made dinner. I'm so hungry, I could eat an entire panda. <laughs> No, Sai, we're not having panda for dinner. Yeah! Here, I made you an electric toothbrush. You'll have the pearliest teeth in town. Thank you, Lola, but I'll brush after dinner. <laughs> Hi! I made dinner. Ooh, I hope you made delicious panda. No, Sai, I made soup. And you'll have the tastiest dinner in town when you eat it with this electric spoon. Everyone knows soup is best enjoyed when you eat it with your hands. Bye. It's time for bed. Come put on your slippers. Oh. Lola. I hope you didn't turn those into electric slippers. Even better, electronic slippers. They sure sound like slippers. <laughs> Say, these are pretty comfy. Looks like these cushy slippers are guiding me towards the bed. Lola! 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 Take me to the bedroom! I'm trying, Sai. There must be some kind of an electronic glitch. <laughs> the town zoo? Lola! Turn off these slippers! I can't hear you, Sai. You're out of range. <laughs> Oh, 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 video. Oh, pandas are from Mars. <laughs> and pandas are penis. <laughs> Sometimes the show's so amazing you have to look away. So that's, that's what I find myself doing several times. <laughs> Three times. <laughs> yeah.
Mrs. Cougar did that four times, and I got to witness it every time. <laughs> oh, hope you were there to catch it. Oh, shit. <clears throat> I hope you were there. I hope you were there. Oh. <laughs> uh, yes, we did. We had uh, another video uh, with a lot of graphic births in it once before. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Daniel makes a good point. This violates anyone who may be on probation. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> We're going to get to the inside of that safe one way or another. Uh, but first, uh, first. She's a perfect 10 at 62. Carol's here to counsel you. Hey, ask her now for some advice. I bet you, you won't ask her twice. Oh, Carol, Carol, Carol fixes your life. Oh, oh, look, oh no. look, I'm bursting out more camels. <laughs> I'm bursting them all out, just like the fucking panda bear. That's the same shirt over and over again. <laughs> oh, fuck. Uh, oh, boy. Uh, we broke Sasha. You did. You did. No. Uh, I thought the safe would explode if no one guesses the code. We'll get there, Ramona. Don't spoil the, the evening for us. Uh Carol's in the speed miracle running now. And uh, damn it, how did you get out of your cage, says Daniel? How do you do that? Oh, I just opened it. <laughs> That's good. That was it. I if mean, only... we, yeah, like, remember, I mean, Bronson was the one that put me in there, but then we kissed and made up. So yeah. I got out. Fortunately, yours didn't have a four digit code. And, uh, Thank God. <laughs> yeah. How, how, did, how, do you, how did you remember that you could open it? You know, I was fiddling around and uh, I I uh, I did the reach around. And when I reached around with the fiddle around, I realized that uh, it just opened. All right. Uh, Carol, how can I give birth like a panda, says Barbara? Well, Barbara, you got to be really flexible, first of all, kind of like me. You know, you got to got to get in your position. I do some stretching and some calisthenics every morning. Uh, in order to be able to have, I just want to be clear. I am wearing pants. All right. Uh, so just so we just so we know. All so right. YouTube that was pants. Pull the video. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Dima Brooks says you can fiddle my reach around. Carol, that's just a random assortment of words. Not sure what it means. Yeah. It's Daniel. Like Find a lot of stuff fiddling around too. Yeah, you know what I did one time, Daniel? I stuck my finger in my belly button and I smelled it and I got a name for it. It's called FNUF. It smells like dead tilapia. <laughs> but why is it? What is that? I don't understand FNUF. FNUF because you've had enough enough of it. Mm. There's not a joke in there. It's just what I call it. Pants are just a form of censorship, says a complete waste of your time and money. Yeah, I like to call them leg prisons. Leg. <laughs> yeah, pants are leg prisons. They are. They can feel like leg prisons. That's I've right. I've had enough to sustain. Enough to fair, fair, Daniel. Oh boy, mm -hmm. I tell you what, though, Carol. Yeah. Um, we don't have a lot of any questions coming in, and we want to get to these four. Things. Do it. I was so. get get rid of me. I was just happy to show my vagina on television. Well, let's. But we didn't actually, and you know, I want to just make that distinction before people uh, rewind and don't watch the rest of the show. <laughs> but I call my legs torso bitches. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi, Mark. It says good is 71. Oh, here's a question for you. How was who was your first love? Who was my first love? That's a great question. Let's get to know Carol. Let's add a little character depth and uh, you know. All right. When I was in college, computers had just started coming around. And there was this guy who sat in the third row of the computer lab and he always wore a plaid T-shirt. And I never got up the courage to go over and tap him on the shoulder and say hi. So he's the one that got away. That's all I, that's all, guys. And that man was Bronson Pinchot. Probably. I saw a film once where a young lady played a very unorthodox game of pool. 
Oh yeah, she uh, yeah yeah she shoots the she shoots them out of a hoo ha. <laughs> All right, Carol, what a joy! Next week's our last show, maybe ever. So uh, maybe we'll see you one more time. Peace out. Uh, if people wait, if people want more Carol, even if the show never comes back, they go to comedylorene.com. That's or right. Comedy Lorene, and uh, they'll find you there. Carol, be right. well. <laughs> wait, did you have like a, a musical routine planned and we just fluffed it? No, that was it. I just, you know, I wanted to add to the slide whistle. I had, <laughs> that's all I got. All right. Well, Get rid of me. Cool. Or as Bronson would say, Make it disappear. <laughs> Adios, Carol. Uh, all right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to crack into that safe. Uh, so let's bring on our very first contestant tonight. Uh, oh, Kim. It's me already. It's you. Awesome. How Hi. You? Kim, you look like a nice lady. Why do you keep coming back and watching this show? <laughs> Is it just about fun. the money? It's a all good right. thing for a Tuesday. That's true. It is just Tuesday. Uh, it's not like we're competing with Friday Entertainment. Kim, do you remember what your guess was? 8972. 8972. And what is the significance of that number, Kim? Um, it was my family phone number when I was a kid. That's exciting. I hope that's the number. <laughs> and rest is the move, Tom, and with $50,000, Barbara wonders, are you in the Pixies? <laughs> <laughs> you got right. that's a very important thing. Feline committing an assault. That's a big hit. <laughs> he will start fighting. Uh, now he's going to attack you. That's right. Kim, you tried. We appreciate I you. I tried. Third time was not a charm. All right. Well, be well, Thank Kim. All right. We'll see you another time. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the second person we want to bring on is not here. Uh, he didn't come. He told me he couldn't come. I want to say he guessed 0001, and it's not the right answer. Uh, so let's bring on uh, Mr. AJ. Buddy, how are you doing? Hey, pretty good. How about yourself? Good. We've seen you here before as well, yes. Yeah, once once before. You, you remember your guess this time? 0221. 0221. And what's the significance of that, Mr. Andrew? It's the birth date of my son, and if I don't win... Well, well, then he has to go. <laughs> Let's try zero to two, one. We've got to rescue the noobs, mom. Uh, here we go. I think this is gonna be. This sounds a little different than it has before. Maybe it's going to be the big number. No, it's not. Uh, AJ, you did not. Thanks, guys. All right, no, thank you. It's good to see you. And let's move to the final guest. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the last time we get to guess to try to open the safe. And look who this is. It's Dr. Ree along with uh, Zimmer Brooks, her bedfellow. How are you? <laughs> doing okay. How about yourself? We're doing okay. And this is fitting for a final guest. Our final guess. Uh, what did I just do? <laughs> Sorry. I screwed that up. Uh, this is fitting for a final guess. What did you guess, Dr. Ree? I guessed zero, 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 zero. What is the significance of that number? Because that is I'm going to win this goddamn thing. Maybe, maybe. We don't know. This could be the one. It's a one in 10,000 chain. It could be zero. It's like in roulette. It always lands on the double zero. It's so frustrating when you bet on odd or even. So. I feel it. This is going to be it. Yeah. Dr. Ree, uh, we appreciate you. Thank you for coming by. And uh, we'll see you again maybe sometime. Take care. Dr. Ree did not win. Uh, nobody won. <clears throat> so here's what we do, guys. Uh, we guessed 50 times to try to win the $50,000 and rescue the noob's mom. Nobody has won the $50,000. Uh, here's what I have from the company that insured the contest. Uh, an envelope that says, do not open, because if someone guesses it right, I have to prove that I didn't open this envelope to tell them what the number was. So I'm going to open it now. 
because we've made all 50 guesses. And I have a list next to me of every guess that we've made, just in case something went wrong. If one of those numbers matches this, then <clears throat> that person, look at this, master envelope, do not open. So we can still, you know, well, this is cool. I wish I was showing this cool envelope every week. I've just been taping <laughs> this stupid thing in the air. Oh, sorry, noob. I know this is important for you. So I'm going to open the envelope, and we're going to see what the four-digit number was. By the way, my mother is, is alive and well and fine, if anyone wanted. She's what? She's alive and fine, just as dandy as pleased. I didn't see anyone ask in the comments about your mother. Uh, oh, and I'll scroll through. Let's see. So someone said, wouldn't it be 100 times? No, it was 25 episodes this season. And this is, uh, you know, we had an average of two guesses per episode or something. Anyway, we got 50 guesses. We made them all. Uh, so let's see. I'm opening this thing. Uh, is this this is tense? Is this a game to you, Sasha? Absolutely. This is fun. I've been waiting so long to open this fucking envelope. Uh, all right, and inside this envelope is a third envelope. <laughs> it's a third envelope uh, that has a little. Okay, let's open that envelope. I hope there's a <laughs> tiny on envelope in there. Well, there is a paper that you can't see through. All right, and there was a winning number. Let me check to make sure that no one guessed it ever. And no, it was not uh, one of the guesses, but the winning number, <clears throat> 0356. That would have opened the safe and won somebody $50,000. And more importantly, rescued the noob's mom. Did we have anything close to that? We did have... 2035, which contained the 035, but started with the 2. Uh, I don't see anything even close to 0356. 0221, which was guessed tonight, is probably the closest numerically. Uh, oh, here we go. What a, uh, a, what a stupid fucking number. <laughs> I was going to guess that. That's my PIN number. Man, I didn't even get a chance. Sorry, noob. Well, we know the number, so <clears throat> we can enter it now and uh, open the safe. But before we do that, uh, I just want to show you. And uh, next week is our finale. It's the absolute finale. Uh, get that woman out of the safe. <laughs> Hold on, Andrew. We have some things we have to wrap up. I know Noob's excited. I know you're excited. Uh, we have one more show. And, you know, it, the president of the network is iffy on whether or not we get to return. So... Uh, next week, super exciting show. Our guest next week. Uh, this this is why I love this guy is for his story. Uh, his name's Patrick Rowland. He is a writer now on the Amber Ruffin show. Uh, Patrick Rowland, the Amber Ruffin show writer. And what I love about Patrick is he quit his job at Target to go be a writer on the Amber Ruffin show. He'd been working at Target trying to get a better job. And then, boom, he gets hired to write for the Amber Ruffin show. So how cool to get to go to your boss at Target and be like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quit my job. I'm going to write for this show. So that's freaking incredible. We're going to talk to Patrick next week. And musical guest, as you see, he's uh, the noob's dad. Who, he's not – last season he came as another guy and disguised himself to make that stunning announcement that kicked off this season – this week, we're just bringing the noob's dad. Oh, <laughs> noob, you cool? <laughs> Look stressed. Mr. Oswald Noobstein is going to come back on the show. And we'll probably reunite with the noob's mom as well. And all of us will have a nice little party and chat. Uh, my God, man, open the safe. How did he, how does he give up that sweet gig at Target? That's right. Uh, probably going to have to squ gonna squeegee the noob's mom out. <laughs> After all this, the noob's mom is just dead. All the humanity, uh, and finally the scat from Noob's Dead. Yeah, we'll come and do some scat singing for us. It'll be real nice. Uh, that'll be next week. And uh, remember that we had that this thing this season with the funny peanut. Michael Lair. Michael Lair, the peanut. Uh, so <clears throat> here's what we can do. Uh, you know, I'm looking. The shows run a little long, so I might be an unpopular decision. We're gonna wait till next week. Well, well, next week we're gonna we know the number now. It's zero three five six, so we don't have to stress 
We'll just wait seven more days. We're going to punch in the number in the safe and try to rescue the noob's mom. No, says Ree Levine, you monster. Uh, farm, future farmers of Saudi Arabia. And Sasha, you stole <laughs> monster. Boys have a penis. Girls have a vagina. That's a good point, Dave. Uh, Sasha almost says, that's right. It's so funny. Anyway, next week, we're going to punch in the number, uh, see what we can find in that safe, uh, see if... You know, we were told after X amount of episodes, I don't remember how many, the safe was going to explode and destroying the money and the doom's mother. But next week, we're going to punch in that code and uh, figure this out. He said when he made me the cartoon, he made it so I could just pop in whenever I want.